Right. So uh, I'm bringing you this time an article by Watts, Duncan, Siegler, and Davis Keene. Uh, what's past is prologue, relations between early mathematics knowledge and high school achievement. And let me tell you, this article drew me for a loop of, as an educator that uh, the findings here are, are such that they make me question my very being um, that the, uh, maybe, uh, you know, school doesn't matter. Um, that it, as long as, as, uh, as students have the right kind of mathematical knowledge before they go into school, that they're, they're ready to go. Um, but let me let me uh, describe like what the, what they're doing here. All right. So um, first, they they establish this high school math skills predict adult outcomes. Uh, so there's all these adult outcomes that correlate with high school math skills, um, college degree attainment, job quality and salary, healthcare choices, um, and so all these things are are markers of success. And um, it, it seems that how high school math skills predict those things. Um, the, we know that math skills shortly after entering school, uh, so this is like in first grade, second grade, are associated with later elementary school achievement. Um, and uh, so then, uh, so we know um, this, um, that, that line exists, but then what about high school? Like how, how do we make that connection? Um, I think that the authors say that um, we have from like preschool to eighth grade, we have that connection. And I think that comes up later. But then, so then early intervention should be supported, right? That if, if we can raise uh, math ability and um, that there's like a direct line from math to high school, um, that uh, early math skills, and early interventions that give math skills and math knowledge, that that um, directly uh, relates to success and adulthood. Um, but no one has tested whether uh, pre preschool math skills predict high school achievement. Um, so that's what this study is thinking about. Um, so to give some background that uh, math skills at age seven are a better predictor of socioeconomic status at age 42 than SES, um, even when IQ, reading achievement, and academic motivation are controlled. So. Uh, the math skills at age seven are a better predictor of all these other um, all these other outcomes in adulthood uh, than the socioeconomic status of the of the student at birth. Um, there seems to be an association between early math skills and later academic achievement. Um, so there's, like I said, there are studies that have demonstrated this association in eighth grade, um, but. Um, the long-term effects of early interventions are not known. So it might be, might happen that um, in the eighth, after the eighth grade that, uh, you know, that they hit the hit mountain and that their early intervention math skills don't work anymore. And they, uh, that as they are learning algebra or something, that um, those things kind of come untethered. Um, and so that's what this uh, study is investigating. And so briefly before we get into what they do, um, well, like what are these early interventions? And so basically they, they're trying to speed up um, what we know about, uh, what we've learned about uh, math development, that math understanding development, that they uh, target counting, uh, number magnitude and recognition, uh, simple adding and subtracting. So um, knowing that like quantities and things, um, and these interventions operate on the logic that boosting early skills will allow for easier and greater conceptual math learning in the future. So the idea here is that if we speed up the developmental process, that that will bring better gains uh, for the students as they progress through school and they learn more math. Uh, uh, so the, the logic suggests that early gains ought to remain stable over time uh, as students are exposed to more math knowledge and skills. So the idea here is that if you speed up um, some students in the beginning, that they'll continue to have um, that lead on other students as uh, they progress through school and as they grow up. Um, but there are all these factors that might affect longitudinal achievement trajectory. So these are all the things that uh, Bailey et al. Um, identify as state factors. Um, so motivation, classroom instruction, home environment, uh, failure success in attaining certain skills. So this is like 
if they've been good at math all the way until they get to algebra, and then algebra is really hard for them, and they, uh, they, they, they experience a lot of failure with it, um, that maybe that has a, um, a negative effect on their, on their math skills. Um, so it could be the fact that individual differences in math achievement could grow over time, is what they're saying here. That, the, that these things might uh, build on one another, uh, and that you end up with uh, students who are, who are drastically different, um, who have obtained the same interventions in the beginning. Um, so this study um, is trying to extend the association between preschool math achievement and later achievement to high school. Um, it introduces thinking about association between early gains and later achievement to investigate whether ability for growth matters. So um, they're introducing this, this metric um, where they're thinking about um, the, that maybe the amount that a student learns from like uh, kindergarten and second grade might be a better, um, or it might be a, a kind of predictor. Um, it might also predict high school um, achievement and achievement in adolescence. Um, so they hypothesized that uh, the uh, relation between preschool mathematical ability and adolescent achievement will be moderate to strong. Um, so they're saying that these two things uh, probably are gonna go together. Um, and uh, also, and it's like that is like pretty consistent with the literature at this time. Um, they also say uh, that the thing that they're introducing, this early grade growth, um, they uh, say that this may signal students' response to school instruction um, and that it might provide a better indicator of achievement in adolescence. So um, that it might uh, get into some of the confounding factors um, that they say can affect longitudinal growth. Um, so they're, they're taking their data from the National Institute of Child Health and Human Development, study of early child care and youth development. And so this is, uh, participants were recruited at birth and they're, they come from um, non-representative uh, places across the U.S., uh, medical centers, um, that they um, are given a battery of tests at 54 months, first grade, third grade, fifth grade, and then 15. Uh, so they have this kind of longitudinal, um, longitudinal record of them. Um, and then all these other things are things that they um, collected that um, to kind of like see if these are things that might affect um, high school achievement or uh, achievement, math achievement in adolescence. Um, and so these are, are a lot of the, the state things uh, that Bailey et al. Um, you know, identified um, the, um, and so, uh, and I think that the, uh, yeah, so that's what is happening here. So they, they build this equation um, for their um, for thinking about later mathematics achievement. Um, they so they're they're saying that um, later mathematics achievement is a product of the early mathematics, reading, and cognitive skills a child possesses, as well as their family and other child characteristics. So um, they have this nice formula for it, um, and then they uh, plug in all the data they have um, to kind of get what is happening. Um, and so the results after, after they run all the numbers um, is that of academic and cognitive skills examined at 54 months, math skills have the strongest correlation with math achievement at age 15. Um, so uh, they put like a lot of thing, different things in here um, and math skills have the best correlation. Um, reading skills are also strongly coincided with this. Um, and I think that that's uh, uh, an important thing that they probably ought to think about. We'll talk about that later. Um, then uh, they say also that early math knowledge affects persist to age 15. So um, uh, in short, you know, that the math knowledge uh, before they enter school is still the math knowledge at age 15. And this is like a, a big issue, I think, for, for schools, that if this is true, um, that the uh, that in most cases, uh, on average, that schools do very little um, to um, 
to like even uh, children's math ability. Um, and so in their discussion, they said that we found um, that the growth um, over the course of kindergarten and first grade um, was just as predictive of achievement at age 15 as it was of third grade achievement. So um, the idea here is that the um, that growth metric, it just doesn't have immediate consequences, um, but it also has this long-term effect. Um, and they, this is confusing to me that they say that um, their study supports the importance of early math skills. Um, and here, here's why I am confused about it is because, so this is the graph um, they, they give about um, the effects of these different factors on, um, on math achievement at age 15. Um, and as you can see, the, um, so this is the, um, the growth, um, and this is the math knowledge at 54 months. And it seems like the growth is a much better predictor um, of um, is a much better um, predictor of the of the achievement at fifteen than just the the base skills are, um, and uh, so I want to talk about that a little bit. Um, but first, um, they they say the future research um, what causes these effects. Um, so some of you brought that up also. Um, is there something that we can that we can like use to strengthen um, these effects? Um, should we be um, putting this into into schools in a, in a big way? Um, is it um, they try to control for a lot of these things, but is it personal or family attributes that are not like are not captured by home? Um, is it instructional quality? Um, or is it a combination of these things? Um, and uh, so they say like, it'd be useful to parse out what's happening here. Um, they say they're, they list some limitations that they had. Um, they, uh, they, they say, you know, maybe we missed some variables that like make a difference in this growth. Um, they do say that um, their growth models attempted to deal with this. Um, but then they ask, like, who do these growth models benefit the most? And um, so it might be the case that there are some children um, who um, are better captured by this growth model than other children, and that uh, that, that might be a problem. Um, they, they entertain that there might be measurement error. Um, but then um, a big limitation I think uh, they talk about is the, is the test batteries given to students was taken from the Woodcock Johnson revised tests, and those have been criticized um, and recently. So those um, the criticisms are that uh, these tests aren't based on early mathematical learning, um, and that they become too difficult too fast, and that uh, students might be uh, children might be uh, doing worse on those tests uh, because of these factors. Um, so your questions, I had a lot of these same questions too, but so some of these, these are some of these questions that you had. Um, that doesn't it weaken uh, the argument for preschool mathematics interventions if it is early grade growth as a predictor of subsequent math achievement? Um, shouldn't students be taught the skills to better grow as part of the learning? And I think that uh, that is, I think that's like a, a real problem in this in this paper that the 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 authors don't really touch on. Um, the, um, yeah, I think that's a place for, um, for I, I like to, to talk about that. Um, but and then someone else asked what factors has been the relationship between early grade growth and later math achievement? Um, how can this be applied to educational programs? I think that this is a good point. Like if this, is, if this research is true, that has great grave consequences for education, that, um, that there's something that we ought to be doing um, in preschool and um, making sure that parents are doing before um, their students get to school. Um, and then I think Prutha brought up this, um, that she saw a discrepancy with uh, Bailey at all. And I think that I saw a discrepancy in that, um, 
or some, uh, like a, a quandary, I think, uh, that with their, um, like their, they're thinking about like general cognitivity. Um, and the fact that like this study also finds that uh, math skill and reading skill are like coincide, like they uh, are correlated. And like that to me um, should have been um, evidence that they were like capturing something that wasn't um, explicitly math, um, that the data was like showing them like, I know that like these tests were all like divvied up, but like it seems like if both of those things are correlated, if we and math are correlated, there might be something uh, larger that's affecting both of them. Um, uh, but I think that you, uh, the, your discrepancy was a little different um, that I, I, I look forward to talking about with you. So thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.